I want to thank my Max, my dear Max. He's my hero. And thank you for the lessons I was able to learn through your illness. A few years ago, um, my professional life as a pediatric allergist and my personal life as a mother of three children came to a screeching collision. When my son, um, who was four years old at the time, sustained a severe allergic reaction to an antibiotic. And um, you can imagine, my field is pediatric allergy. So it was uh, a very, very difficult time. And as I watched my child deteriorate by the hour, we were first at the children's hospital and they basically told us to me, you know, we have nothing more to offer for you and um, he needs to go to a specialized um, facility such as a burn unit. And you can imagine, as a mother, um, my world just collapsed and as he got sicker, I just kept getting crazier and, and more frustrated and I was in so much pain, I kept saying, why is this happening to my child? Why is this happening to me? I'm a pediatric allergist, you know, how is this possible? And I just cried hysterically and I, you know, anybody would say, just calm down, relax. I would just, you know, say, get away, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm the mother of this child, it's my child, oh my God, my child. You know, it was just, it was as if my ego just took over and I just got more and more hopeless and angry and just nothing made sense. And uh, the day that they, the moment actually that they decided to put him on a breathing machine, you know, we call that in medicine, we intubate a child and then you ventilate them. I, I mean, it was obvious. He was uh, basically drowning in all the bloody discharge in his lungs. At that point, all his skin had come off, all his mucous membranes had died, and he was, uh, he was dying, basically. I, I just, I just walked out, I took my gowns and my gloves and everything that you had to pack yourself up with, took it off, walked past my friends and family, and just walked the halls. And I found this wall, and believe it or not, I just banged my head against a wall because that seemed the only thing that made sense to me. My husband is a doctor, yet all the training we had in the world couldn't prevent us from going through what we went through, the heartache, the struggles, the challenge. And finally, I just sat on the ground. I remember it was a cold ground somewhere in some alley in, in the hospital, in the burn uh, unit, and uh, I was just empty. I was at the absolute extreme of powerlessness. I, I didn't know where to go, what to do, what to think. I hadn't eaten in five days, I hadn't slept, <laughs> and I just sat there. I truly don't know how many hours passed by, and I just realized that everything became very quiet. I couldn't think. And then something happened while I sat there. It was almost as if there was a breeze that came over me. And I felt very calm. And I almost felt as if I was able to connect into this world of just unknown knowledge, unknown to me before. And something came over me that was so powerful, which basically said, Muni, you don't own your child. Your child is not your possession or your collection. This child, this trust is given in your care. And whatever happens, okay, he's going to die. Maybe he lives, maybe he dies. It doesn't matter. This child is given in your care, and you should get up, 
gather your courage, your strength, which you have, because if he's given in your care, you're also given courage and you're given strength and you're given joy. Do it, get up, go to this child and joyfully just accompany him to wherever it is that he's going. And it sounds miraculous, but I got up, I got myself back to the burn unit, gowned myself up, and I went into his room. And for the first time, I noticed his room was quiet. The only thing I heard was the breathing machine breathing for him. And it was very comforting. And sometimes we just need to surrender to you know, a higher power, and whether you call that cosmic energy or God or divine love. I, you know what? It's all descriptions of the same reality. And I want to say, really, after what we went through, I, I had to drive from New York City to my town. You know, every other day I did that. And when I was waiting for a light, I'd look around and i think, does anybody know the tragedy I'm going through, the pain I have in my heart? They see this well-dressed person in a nice car, you know, I was driving a Lexus at the time. I mean, they probably thought I had it all. They didn't know the heartache I was in and the support I needed. And this is what I want to say, is that today, please, no matter what you're going through, look around you. There may be a Mooney just, you know, on the other side of your street or somebody who's in pain, regardless what that pain is. Go and be love and give love to that person. Because I know from first-hand experience, a little love goes a very long way.